Someone who just barely evaded the cops and now you're on your way to your new life, literally having to forget everything and everyone you once knew. And the person who essentially put you into this predicament is now forcing you to try to go with him to further his goals. And did I mention that you paid $125,000 to be there? Now, I don't know about you, but had it been me, this is how the situation would have played out. Remember what I told you. It's not over. Hey everybody and thank you for watching another video. My name is Merge and after being on YouTube for just about two years, I've seen more than my fair share of what if recommendations. And I want to say thank you to everyone who's commented their ideas because trust me when I say they do not go unnoticed. So if you had an idea that you felt would make an awesome story and I haven't gotten to it yet, just know that I've seen it and it's on the list. But with that being said, every idea isn't necessarily worth making a video on. And not because they're bad ideas or anything. Okay, well, some of them are. But for the majority of them, they're just ideas I couldn't make sense of. Because even though I have some off-the-wall concepts in my stories, I still like to have some level of believability from a character perspective. Or, at least I like to think so. So in this video, I'll be going over some of the most requested ideas that I'll just never do, and explain why they wouldn't work. And if you think that I'm wrong, by all means, let me know down below in the comments and we can talk about it. So, with all that being said, let's just get right into it. Idea number one. What if Hank looked into Walter's bag when he said he had a half million in cash? With this idea, what I want to know is, in what world would anybody, not just Hank, but anybody open up someone else's personal bag, especially when they're in the process of moving out of their own home and possibly getting a divorce? And even if he did joke about having half a million in cash, what kind of curiosity drives a person to go through someone else's personal belongings just because they said a joke? I mean, if I said I had a talking hamster that rides a skateboard in my backyard, I don't think anyone's breaking down my door to find out if it's true. And how would that conversation even go? Would Hank say, oh yeah, half a million in cash? Let me see. No, of course not. Because because he knows that Walter and Skylar are broke, so what does he really have to be curious about? I mean, maybe if Hank was suspicious about Walter from the jump, but if that was the case, then I don't think that he would be the person to help him pack. Because we all know that Hank doesn't do well at keeping his cool in the presence of bad guys. I mean, look what he did at the bar when he found some guys dealing meth right in front of him. And maybe he was on a little meth as well, because Hank took on two guys at once with no backup, and these guys were both like a foot taller than him. But I guess for Hank the Tank? That was light work. And I mean, look what he did to this guy, literally making him bite the bar. And who's gonna pay for his braces? And then remember what he did when he found out that Walter was Heisenberg. Oh! He punched him so hard that it forced him to see without glasses. So just imagine what he would have done to Walter if he opened that bag to find a half a million in cash. He would have probably had a panic attack, but for any of that to happen, Hank would have had to been bold enough to open up that duffel bag and I just don't think he would do that. So moving on. Idea number two, what if Mike help Nacho escape. Now I know everybody wants to see Nacho have his happy ending and I agree, after everything he's been through, he deserves it. From helping the Salamanca twins in a shootout, to being a personal snitch for Gus, and not to mention the time he spent in the game before the events of Better Call Saul. The guy needed a break. But once we saw him on his knees in front of everyone that we know survives until the events of Breaking Bad, there was just no way of him surviving his fate. He was just lucky to have been able to pull the trigger on himself before the Salamancas got him, because I have a feeling it would have ended very similar to the scene in Law Abiding Citizen. Now this is for your penis, but we'll get to that later. But when considering this idea, the question that would be asked the most is why would Mike risk everything, including his own family, for him? Because that's what he'll be doing. And outside of being casual friends with each other, what benefit does Nacho even offer? He's wanted by the cartel, Gus doesn't even want him, and he can't even operate in good faith when doing a drug deal. Because he was petty enough to skip out on $20 a price, and I mean, come on Nacho, $20? Really? Uh, we're, we're short 20 $20. And you seriously want to tell me that Mike Ermintrout, a man more dedicated to family than Walter, was just going to put his in jeopardy for a man who is, again like Walter, a walking time bomb? Just, I just don't see it. Because let's just imagine the only two scenarios that could happen with Mike saving Nacho. Either he killed the Salamanca twins while Nacho holds him at gunpoint, and it sounds good so far. But even if he killed Bolsa and Gus was able to have his revenge on Hector right then and there, I doubt he would just let Nacho walk away. I mean, how could he? What would he do to Don Eladio? I don't know what happened to him, but they were alive when I left. You know the cartel won't go for that, because this is better call Saw Gus, and he's not in a position to attack the cartel head on right now. And that same question would apply to Gus. Why would he risk it all for him? And the only other scenario would be if Mike tried to kill everyone, including Gus, Tyrus, and Victor, but I'm sorry, Mike is not that good of a shot. He couldn't even kill the random foot soldiers that tried to rob Saw. I mean, 
he did, but not all at once. Because remember, one of the guys did get away and he needed Saul to be a distraction for him to pull that shot off. And even still, he needed two attempts to do it. And I honestly don't even understand how it was possible for the car to flip that way and even more so how Saul didn't get any damage from it. But in this situation, no matter who he starts with, regardless if it's the Salamancas or Team Gus, Mike would have to kill everyone while also ensuring that Nacho stays alive. And even if by some miracle he was able to lay down cover fire for Nacho to get away, because let's face it, he's not taking everyone out. But Mike would have to spend the rest of his life looking over his shoulder to make sure that his daughter-in-law and granddaughter are safe. And plus, this man's like 70 years old, so realistically, how long do you think he can keep them safe before he kicks the bucket? And then what? He's gonna put Nacho in charge to look after them while he's gone? <laughs> yeah, right. This guy slept through a literal home invasion and was only kept alive because Gus wanted it. So, with Mike and Nacho, there are just too many loose ends for them to do anything stupid. Because whether it's Papa Varga, Kaylee, or Mike's daughter-in-law, they all can't make it out alive if Gus or the Salamancas are coming after them. So, yeah, moving on. Idea number three. What if Breaking Bad happened before Better Call Saul or Walter having cancer during the events of Better Call Saul? This is one of the ones I get a lot, and I know the only reason why people want to see that is because of a possible team up between Walter and Lalo, but logistically, it just couldn't work and there are too many factors that go against it. Like for one, if Walter got cancer during the Better Call Saul timeline and was suddenly inspired to cook meth, he couldn't really turn to Jesse who's probably still in high school because, I mean, why would he do that? And even if he wanted to go out and try to do it solo, he'd have a hard time not only getting the RV, but also trying to sell the product, even if it is the best. Because when it was just him and Jesse, they were at least small time. But with it just being Walter, he's legitimately a nobody who wouldn't even be given a chance to show what he can do. And if he tried to force a meeting, he'd probably end up beating and robbed like Saul did when he tried to sell the phones. And speaking of Saul, it was Jesse who recommended that they use him for Badger and that led them to having the best lawyer they can ask for in the criminal underworld. And without that direction from Jesse of all people, Walter wouldn't be able to get the RV RV, let alone cook for Gus or partner with Lalo. I mean, he'd have to get past Tuco first, who's still working in a taco shop, and if he met Walter there, I doubt he would have been able to just blow up the place and walk away without being seen. Something I don't understand till this day. How was he able to stay standing when he was the closest to the fulminated mercury when he threw it on the ground, and it caused an explosion that blew windows out and knocked AC units to the floor? But I guess the less you think about it, the more it makes sense? But even if I wanted to stretch the truth and say that maybe Jesse was still down to partner with Walter even in high school, they could only sell the meth for so long until Badger gets caught. And when he does, they can't really call Saul who is still Jimmy McGill at this time. And then for some reason, if Walter came to the realization that he had to kill Badger in order to keep his secret safe, who would he call to do it? Because he doesn't have Todd who introduced him to Jack, which couldn't have been done without me. So yeah, and I'm saying all this and I haven't even talked about Gus or Lalo who again wouldn't even give Walter a chance without someone to vouch for him and he just doesn't have that in that timeline. So yeah, I tried but no. Moving on. Idea number four. What if Hank joined Heisenberg? Alright, so you're telling me that you expect Hank Schrader, the most diehard cop in the entire series to just out of nowhere join Walter on his quest to becoming a drug kingpin? The same guy who stared down the barrel of a gun and would rather be remembered as a cop than even for a second strike any agreement with, well, Nazis? My name is Asak Schrader. You can go f I mean, maybe if the show started off with Hank and Gomez being dirty cops who are also on Gus's payroll, then absolutely. Because then, when Hank found out who Walter really was, the conversation in the garage would've went down a whole lot differently. And that's an idea that I can work with, but him just jumping onto the Heisenberg bandwagon out the blue is just wildly out of character for Hank. Because this is a man who passed up on a promotion to a high paying job to continue chasing street dealers when he is clearly overqualified. And I know he did a lot of questionable things when he was using Jesse against Walter, but in the end, it was all always in a pursuit of justice, and most importantly, he never did it for the money, meaning that he can't be bought and making him the ultimate obstacle for Walter that we see throughout the series. So in short, Hank becoming a dirty cop? Impossible. But Hank already being a dirty cop? Very possible. Moving on. Idea number 5. What if Jesse adopted the Peekaboo Kid? Now I'm not gonna lie, during the episode of Peekaboo, Jesse did show a lot of parental-like qualities. He made sure the kid was fed, he cared about his choice of entertainment because, I mean, what, what even is this? And at the end of the episode, he made sure that the kid didn't see his dad's head that probably looks like Squidward when he got sat on. But regardless of all that, even if he had the means to support the child, because he does, why would this kid be your first choice? A literal crack baby. 
and I'm sorry, you can call me heartless, but I feel that he did more than enough by calling the police and getting the kid to social services because even he knew that he wasn't ready for that responsibility. And why would he want to walk in the same footsteps as Walter White trying to be a parent slash drug dealer because that's just working out so well for him right now, following a man that missed the birth of his daughter for a drug deal. And let's not forget that Jesse's only two or three episodes away from spiraling out on heroin because that's when Combo dies. And if he was really adamant about keeping the kid even with his new addiction, that would just be sad for everybody. because the kid would go from a crack house to a lavish heroin house. And no matter how endearing it may seem at first with Jesse stepping up to be the father this kid never had, I'm pretty sure that after Jane's overdose and Mike shows up, that kid is going right to social services and will be dropped off like a Uber Eats order. And then everything will play out like it originally did. Jesse goes to rehab, he gets beat up by Hank, and he forgets all about the kid like we forgot all about his little brother Jake. And don't you dare lie to me and say that Jake is your favorite character. But right now, as far as parenting in the Breaking Bad universe, I'll leave that up to Walter. After all, I mean, I'm the one who's the father here. Idea number six. What if Emilio survived instead of Crazy A? In my opinion, I think it would have been easier for Walter to kill Emilio because unlike Crazy A, I don't think he would have been looking for a reason not to kill him. The dude is straight up unlikable to everybody. Like remember when he was in Saul's office and he almost shoulder bumped Kim? Or more recently when he wanted to kill both Walter and Jesse out in the desert because he thought Walter was a DEA agent? And I'm not gonna lie, I respect him for being overly cautious because you can't never be too careful. But what I can't respect is him blowing a mouthful of cigarette smoke in Walter's face. And personally, I couldn't let that go. And the look Walter gives him just says, I hope you die first. And sure enough. But in all seriousness, both Emilio and Crazy Eight signed their death warrants when they crossed paths with Walter Hartwell White. And no matter the order, either way they were gonna die. It's just that if the roles were reversed, I don't think Walter's shedding a tear for Emilio. Idea number seven. What if Walter Jr. or Skyler had cancer? I think in a situation like that, Walter would be more inclined to keep his job at a car wash. And if anything, maybe even get in the third job just to make sure that Skylar or Walter Jr. has the treatment they need. Because we all know that Walter is a born provider that will do anything for his family, including selling drugs to make sure that they're taken care of after he's gone. But because it's not necessarily about Walter, but about the health and safety of his wife or child, I think the concept of him risking his freedom to sell drugs wouldn't be in the cards for him, believing that the risk would be too great and unnecessary. And honestly, it might take the health of his wife or child being in jeopardy for him to put his pride to the side and accept Gretchen and Elliot's offer to work for Grey Matter. And that would probably be the best case scenario for Walter White in this situation. He's back in the company that he helped build and he would never have to enter the meth business. But in my opinion, that story is so far away from what Breaking Bad is, it might as well be a whole nother show. Because in the background while Walter is busy being cancer free and working for Grey Matter, Jesse would probably get himself killed trying to get back in good with Emilio and Crazy 8 who think that he's a snitch. And for Gus, he would have to deal with all the Salamancas that he never had to before, like Tuco and the twins, which I would love to see an interaction between Gus and Tuco, but that's still not enough for me to want to see that explored. Because it's just better call Saul again with extra steps if you really think about it. So yeah, moving on. And this video is getting a little too long, so I'm going to do some rapid fire ones before I get to the last one, which was the main reason that I made this video. So let's go, rapid fire time. Idea number eight. What if Skylar never gave Ted the money? Now I know a lot of people might think that if Walter had the money, he could easily just leave town with his family before Gus was able to get to him. But even Saul knew that Skylar wouldn't go along with the plan, and Walter didn't really have the greatest response to that either. How are you gonna sell this to that wife of yours and your teenage son? I have got no choice. But seriously, even if he had the money, I don't think there's nothing he can say to convince them that leaving town is the best thing for them to do, especially with Walter Jr. Because I'm sure that he would see his Uncle Hank as the person to call if they need help with anything. And not only that, but Walter never told Skyler what his plan actually was. And as much as a ride or die as she is for him right now, not even she would be okay with just leaving their lives behind for some, some prophylactic measure. And the moment they question why they're in danger or who they're in danger from, he would have no choice but to admit to his family who he really is and try to convince them that he has everything under control. And maybe Skyler would side with him, but Walter Jr. is calling Hank the first chance he gets, guaranteed. And look no further than his reaction when Skyler told him the truth. You're full of shit is what you are. Idea number nine. What if Tuco killed Jimmy and the skaters in episode two of Better Call Saul? 
Now, in my opinion, if Saul Goodman was going to die at any point throughout the series, I feel it would have been most impactful during the episode Bagman as opposed to the second episode of Better Call Saul. Because at least during the episode Bagman, there's a lot more at stake than just him and two skaters. He's literally paving the road for Mike and Gus and is partially responsible for their success. And without him, there's a pretty good chance that Lala would have been in Breaking Bad. So maybe stay tuned for that video. But him dying in episode 2 of Better Call Saul, he's not even Saul Goodman at that point and he's barely even a lawyer. So I think him getting killed that early on in the series series would just amount to someone else filling the void of a criminal lawyer and I have all the money in the world on Bill Oakley and he might even snatch up Kim if we're being honest about it but that's just me. Moving on. Idea number 10. What if Huel ate Kim? Bruh. Bruh I swear to god y'all really gonna make me do this? <sighs> okay. <clears throat> no. Moving on. Idea number 11. What if Walter took Saul with him to New Hampshire? I want you to put yourself in Saul Goodman's shoes at this point. You're someone who just barely evaded the cops and now you're on your way to your new life, literally having to forget everything and everyone you once knew. And the person who essentially put you into this predicament is now forcing you to try to go with him to further his goals. And did I mention that you paid $125,000 to be there? Now I don't know about you, but had it been me, this is how the situation would have played out. Remember what I told you? Over. Because this is not the same Heisenberg that ordered nine guys to be killed in prison. This is a man that is barely a few steps ahead of the police and is in the exact same boat as Saul. So he's not really in the position to call the shots. And I know that he's typically not the violent type, but I think if the only thing that was standing in his way to a new life was a cancer riddled man who can barely have a conversation without coughing, I'm sure that he would take his chances against Walter if he had to, but that's just me. Moving on. Alright guys, so I have one more idea on my list and it may surprise you and I'm honestly a little torn on this one because I'm sure somewhere down the line I will get around to it, but I just can't tell you when. And that is idea number 12. The idea of a Breaking Bad Sopranos crossover. I cannot tell you the amount of requests I've gotten to do this idea and I am so sorry to disappoint everybody but I have never seen The Sopranos. I watched maybe one or two episodes with my dad during the holidays but I just don't feel I'm educated enough on the show to turn it into a video idea. Because all that I know about the show is that it's this Goodfellas Mafia series which is right up my alley and this guy Tony Soprano recounts his life through therapy sessions and there may be a guy in the show named Big Pussy and I don't even know if I can say that without cringing to myself because what? Seriously? So what, people call themselves that? I mean, where I'm from, that means something completely different. But I can't make any negative judgments about the show because from what I did watch, it was pretty good. I just never got around to watching it all. But maybe one day, maybe when I hit 100k, that'll be my goal to expand the what if brand to more than just Breaking Bad. And as far as other crossovers like The Walking Dead or The Sons of Anarchy with Breaking Bad, again, I am so sorry to disappoint everybody, but I have never seen either of those shows all the way through. And I know The Walking Dead fans are going to come after me in the comments, but I am so sorry, but I don't think I'll ever watch that show. I've maybe watched three episodes from the first season, the episode where Negan meets Glenn with a bat, and the episode with a tiger, but after that, I don't think I have the patience to sit through the entirety of Breaking bad because it's like four or five different spin-off series now and I wouldn't even know where to start and honestly I just I just think it's too late for me but if you think you can convince me in the comments you are more than welcome to try but that's gonna do it for me on this video guys I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it and let me know down below in the comments your craziest what if ideas you can come up with because I'm sure I'm gonna get even wilder ideas and I'll have to make a follow-up video to this but until next time guys my name is Merge later <laughs>